I actually have to put a disclaimer in front of today's episode because I feel you all should know this going in. Nothing happens. Even when something is happening, nothing is happening. They even force an exclamation point after the title, but nothing makes it more exciting. When six teenagers go on a snowboarding trip unprepared, trouble puts their angst at an all-time high, but will faith and unity be enough to save them? Do you care? Kids getting lost and finding their way home, that's the hook. But nothing happening between those two events, that's the good hook. So after the film opens with some stock footage set to overdramatic music, believe me that sets the tone just right, we're treated to our cast of mostly homegrown actors. Pay attention, cause nearly every teen carries their real name into the role. Yep, it's one of those movies. So that means we have Tiffany, Josh, Travis, Sarah, and introducing Mitchell! Mitchell! Introducing Mitchell McCurdy, I guess everyone else was already such an established star by this point. New student Sarah has just been transferred to a small school in Sterling, Alaska, but has some trouble fitting in. It smells like a locker room. It smells? Well then, it must be your cheap designer knockoff perfume. It just smelled fine until you came in. Who <laughs> snap, pretty girl. Mm -hmm. Hey baby, how was school? I just broke a heel. Did you see that? I'm in hillbilly hell. I'm in hillbilly hell! Hey, it's not that bad. Besides, those two girls didn't even take your remarks seriously. Their comeback was a joke, and they're two normal girls with their own lives who have more important things to talk about and worry about than some new girl at school. How about that new girl? Can you believe she said our room stank? I know, right? What a skinny skank. Or maybe they aren't and they don't. Who knows? Uh, can you believe her remark about our room smelling? I mean, come on! That was just rude and uncalled for. No, oh, at least you told her. This is going to be their entire evening. Can we check in with someone else? We see Travis and Josh, Tiffany and her bigger sister, and new student Sarah with her daughter all getting ready for tonight's dance. For those of you who might find Sarah's teen motherhood an interesting development, don't worry, that plot thread goes nowhere. But there is something kind of weird during the scene between Tiffany and her sister. You know what? You're so evil. I don't care what he thinks, and I don't care what you think. Plus, she looks like Minnie Mouse from Heat. Mom, she's doing it again. Did you see it? Let's play that back. I don't care what he thinks, and I don't care what you think. Plus, she looks like Minnie Mouse from Heat. Mom, she's doing it again. I have no idea. Maybe the director thought the shot was so boring he was like... It's genius! I told you to leave me alone. Sarah, I went by your house to see our baby, and your mom said you went out dancing. What a great mother you've turned out to be. Two reasons. Two reasons I'm not going to bash this scene to shreds. One. Pastor Greg's first Christmas. I just saw it and survived, so no scene can kill me. Two, Mitchell McCurdy actually gave me info on this movie, so eh. Nothing really in the first half, which is a shame because I'd really like to know what was up with that picture, but more on the second half, and oh boy, I can't wait. We need to talk. I'll see you tomorrow. I don't care what you got going on. But Sarah ignores Mitchell and parties hard at the dance that night, unfortunately getting more action on the dance floor than she planned. What a skinny skank. <laughs> Did you just hear that? Pig. Hey! Who the hell do you think you are? Really? You think you have a right to be offended? You just insulted her first! Maybe you are a pig. Did 
Did you just hear that? Pig. So after the two girls hog it out, Tiffany tries to get Sarah to pray with her, but she's not going for it. So Josh effectively tells his girlfriend to shut up about it, and they'll go on one big happy snowboarding trip tomorrow. Don't let it get out, alright? I only want us to go, okay? Well, you guys know it gets dark by four. Don't worry about it, you don't have to go. I'm not worried about it. I just want to make sure we have as much time as possible for genuine boarding. <laughs> alright, dude. Um... Well, that was an interesting scene. What do you think, Julie? It does have a certain ambiance. So the next morning, Mitchell shows up at the church in his best Fonzie costume. Hey. But Sarah and her mother aren't happy. Look, Mitch, I'm not going to allow you to mess up Sarah's chance for change. You hurt her once, and I'm not going to allow you to do it again. Get saved, or go home. Mitchell does neither and waits for her to come out, harassing her and her new friend Travis, but the gang doesn't let that bother them as they get on the road for the mountains. Did you bring warm gear? I brought what I have on. I thought we were only going to be gone a couple of hours. Yeah, you'll be fine. I brought my new boots today. I thought I'd break them in. So, um, you, you brought me some gloves, right? Hey, I resent the implication that all men are poor planners. That's too broad. Maybe just all Alaskan men? I get to be Josh's snow bunny. <laughs> 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 Tiffany, do you know what a snow bunny is? Yeah, I do. Don't I? Well, according to a troubling amount of Urban Dictionary posts, it means a white girl who is very into black men. Uh, well, that's interesting. I'm just not quite sure how you get from this to this. <laughs> Am I? Uh, Urban Dictionary. It will ruin everything you know. They find some snowmobile drivers and try to hitch a ride to the top of the mountain, naturally sending the girls to help grease the wheels. Hey, will you give us a ride? Where are you guys going? We're gonna shred some powder. I'm a snow bunny. You what kind of bunny? Don't you dare judge her! It's revealed one of them is Mitchell, but they still take the teens to their destination because I guess they had nothing better to do. How high is it? Probably 10,000 feet. That's like two miles straight down and probably a nine mile hike out the backside. Yeah, thanks for your concern though, but I, mean, I was born and raised here. I've never been lost in my life. Except for that time I turned to heroin. Now will you talk to me? No. I hope you freeze. Well, that'll get you in her good graces. Way to go out like a gentleman. So the teens finally start snowboarding and playing around while all is well. Okay, why didn't we have the same dramatic slow-mo when it happened to the other guy? What, it's only a big deal when it happens to someone in blue? Well, turns out that weird kid Flounder was in the blue and has broken his ankle. Alone on the mountain without cell reception, they carry him down the wilderness until they see a campfire where they stop for shelter. But the man there seems a little more than charitable. Yeah, hey. 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 Jimmy! She broke a leg, huh? It's okay, man. I can fix it. I can fix it. This guy's yeah. ripping me out. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Please don't kill us. After that sudden visit to the asylum, the teens pull weird kid with a sled Timmy gave them. And from a production point, this must have been hard. Mitchell says there are only about five hours of viable daylight, meaning they could only do a few takes before they just had to stamp fine on it and move on. The camera lens would often freeze or fog over, and power cords would get so cold they'd snap in half, needing to be replaced. He goes on to mention that at night, the temperature dropped to below 20. Well, that must have sucked. 20 below is pretty cold. But I guess calling this 20 below wouldn't have been as dramatic. What about 
The concerned mothers call around while the teens huddle together for warmth that night, resuming their trek in the morning. Let us pray. Father, we ask that you would please take us home. Move! No, no, we can't find them anywhere. This is all your fault, Josh. Dude, this is not my fault. Yes, it is. We're lost, and you brought us out here. Okay, that's not anybody's fault, though, all right? We can't blame everything on Josh. Exactly. I can't help it that every time we want to go somewhere, you freak out about it. Josh, she's right. We're going the wrong way. And how would you know? We're not even going down the mountain. Hey, don't make fun of the vertically challenged. People with special needs are all over the place. Jimmy! Jimmy! The group splits up after an argument, resulting in Sarah going on her own. But this isn't a feminist story, so she breaks down pretty quick and Travis has to come help her. Then the gang realize they've been traveling in circles. I think this is Gnarly's camp. We're going in circles. Did we just waste a whole day? Yes, we did. And did you waste an hour of our time? Yes, you did. Josh's incredible leadership has led them unbelievably far from their van, but they are missed while the entire community, it seems, is praying for their safe return. The teens decide to leave Weird Kid behind with his friend with no more than a pink scarf to mark where they've left him, which is promptly removed anyway because Weird Kid is a little chilly. You'll look so fashionable when they find your body. I'm not blaming you, Josh. There were so many snow machine tracks out there. Nobody would have known which one to follow. I just thought you knew because you said you did. Oh my god, nothing is happening. You're sitting on your butts again, getting even colder. Travis and Sarah give up together, and Josh and Tiffany are forced to go on without them. Meanwhile, the community are taking things into their own hands with semi-police organization. Shut up! All of you, shut up! You never contacted me! Uh, who are you? You never contacted me! So Miss Nobody has the admittedly bright idea to work with the truckers who are on the roads and who might have seen the teens. We need searchers now. They said we had to wait 24 hours. We don't have 24 hours. It's 40 below out there. Ah, oh, you missed a perfectly good opportunity for a title drop. Yeah, it would have been awkward, but so was the rest of the scene. Well, they're missing. You, you gotta tell everybody I'd get in your CB, get the rounders, look for a blue van. And now she's crying? Who are you and why do you care so much? Come on, I need your help, whatever. I gotta run to make. If you find the van. I'll go to dinner with you. You got a deal, Gracie. I'll meet you at Cooks for dinner. Well, thank you on that short contest to see whose voice was more grating. I really appreciated that. They find the van, but it's deserted. So the community takes three snowmobiles on different paths in an effort to find the teens. When people get cold, their mind starts playing tricks on them. They lose their motor skills. Um, you'll see them do odd stuff like take their clothes off. They think they're really hot. They're sluggish. Um, they do the most bizarre things. Um, look for... Uh, oh, look! It's Bill Nye, the bad foreshadowing guy. Where somebody um, could be sitting up on the bank. Okay, any questions? Didn't there used to be light on your face? So they roll out to find the lost snowboarders, but Josh can't go any further, leaving his girlfriend Tiffany as the only mobile member in the group. Split up, because that'll be easy to find, right? I know that this is all my fault. You know, I don't care how cold we get. We have to keep going. Oh, don't you dare give up on us. Don't give up on us. I have nothing left to give. I have nothing left to give. Nothing. So Tiffany heads out on her own, unfortunately succumbing to the exhaustion. God, you said you'd never give me more than I could handle! You're still alive. I mean, it was more than everyone else could handle, but you still got a shot. 
But then it just gets depressing. She's crying, begging for God, her parents, and with that sappy, dramatic music that thankfully has always been consistently inappropriate, it really goes too far. And then she starts to feel heated. It's so hot. So, so hot. Play it. It's getting hot in here. So hot. So take off all your But just as Tiffany pretty much dies, all other teens are miraculously found. Woo, she sure got the raw end of it. But wait, who's that? It's Mitchell, but we haven't seen him since... I hope you freeze. Since that. He comes to the aid of the poor girl and does, uh, does this. No! Oh! Got my money's worth. Looks like I'm done for this week. See you guys. Why? She didn't do anything wrong. Forgive me, Jesus. I promise. I promise not to sin anymore. Please. What? What is he gonna do with her body? I have to say it is an honor and God's amazing grace that I can give to you your valedictorian for 2009, Miss Tiffany Clarkson. Okay, so she's still at uh, what? What? Just because her character's graduating doesn't mean the actress isn't actually 14 or something kissing a guy in his 20s. And what about Josh? And what about Sarah? What about Sarah's daughter? And what about Weird Kid's ankle? And what about Truck Lady? What about that creep in the mountains? And what about the flippin' Jesus picture on the wall? This is what happens when the movie actually does something. It gets stupid. You want my rating? This movie is god witless. From the characters to the plot twist to all the sitting and all the quips, there's nothing smart or clever in front of us. The teens do a fairly good job of representing teenagers if not for terrible delivery sometimes. They gave too much and mugged for more reaction than they should have. You can only watch teens cry and die for so long before you get bummed out. And that's all that happens because you're certainly not going to cry. They did their best and worked against very difficult situations just to bring us this story and this message. That's the sad part. The people got hurt, sick, and lost equipment trying to make this movie. The funny scenes make you cry and the dramatic scenes make you laugh. But this is not the worst thing I've seen, not at all, and it did win an award from the International Family Film Festival. So I guess in the end it's really up to the individual, and we all come from different walks of life. Watch out for the women. Now they're gonna come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. And there's only one thing they want from a young, decent Amish fella. Farm fresh produce? Can't nobody stop the juice, so baby tell me what's the use? I said, it's getting hot in here, so, hot. so take off all your clothes. I am getting so hot, uh, I uh, will uh, take uh, my uh, clothes uh, off. Oh, it's getting hot in here, so, hot. so take off all your clothes. I am getting so hot, uh, I will uh, take uh, my clothes off. Why you let the ball if you ain't popping the bottles? Ooh, snap, pretty girl.